everyone, welcome. We are at Owls Creek at the Virginia Aquarium. I am Mrs. Culver and we have Miss Evans from Lynn Haven and I am from SeaTac and we are here to measure our baby oysters. We have done this all year, so we're very anxious after a long hard winter to see how big our oysters are. And we are at Owls Creek and I just want to give you an overlook where we are. And if you could just look to see what you can observe about Owls Creek. We are neighbors, SeaTac are neighbors, and this is our watershed. And we have Miss Lauren is here from the aquarium. Miss Lauren, can you please tell us what you do here at the aquarium? Yes, hi guys, good afternoon. My name is Miss Lauren, as she pointed out. So I am under school and youth um, education. So I help with the scout programs, on-site and off-site programs as well, in addition to outreach. So anything related to um, schools and youth programs, I am helping out with here at the aquarium. Can you tell us anything about Owls Creek Watershed? Yes. Any organisms or living things or how it all works? and what you know. Yes ma'am. So in terms of Owls Creek, it's actually the only salt water, um, water wetland in this area. So there is salt water in this marsh, which is really interesting because typically it's brackish water, which some of you are, might be familiar with that word, but for those of you who aren't, brackish water again is that mixture of fresh water and salt water. So we do have fresh water coming in from the rain. So the start of our watersheds happens when the rain hits the top of those mountains and it runs down to the valleys of those mountains. And once those rivers and streams feed into larger bodies or estuaries and ultimately meet our Atlantic Ocean, those larger bodies of salt water, that's where those two different bodies of waters will mix to make that brackish water. In terms of some of the wildlife you might see out here, we just saw um, a pelican actually land in the water. I was trying to see if I could find him, but we do have a lot of really cool waterfowl or water birds on the water. Typically, we'll have some bald eagles nesting to the right. Um, I don't see them right now. We also have blue herons as well as green herons that come out here as well as some egrets. So I'm a really big fan of water birds. So that is my knowledge of our um, out, life out here. Wonderful, thank you, Miss Lauren. So we're gonna go, I am gonna actually go um, down to check out our float. It's, there's a lot of stuff growing on top, it looks like. <laughs> and the last time we were here was about four months ago. Um, November? We were here in November. Yes, it was right around election day, wasn't it? I believe so. I'm gonna go very careful down here. And it was very low tide. Because I don't want to make a big splash. <laughs> exactly. There's some moisture floats hiding under that floating dock there. It's gonna be challenging to get out. So if you pull on our rope there, Miss Culver, it should come around to the left. smelly and that is some chemical breakdown there with a lot of the microorganisms in the marsh breaking down things like leaf litter and any natural organisms that might have passed away so that smell typically is eggs and that is a sulfurous byproduct of these chemical processes so you can see your teachers are really getting in there before it's supposed to rain which is great because it typically usually rains on us yeah that's what I've heard <laughs> from Rachel
how you boys and girls always to have your, your materials. I forgot my gloves. Can you, can you yes, hand this to me? Of course. I've got those gloves for you. Thank you, Miss Laura. Of course. Sorry, I just don't want to drop them in the water. Yeah, that would have been good. Now, <laughs> we did find some other friends that decided to land on top here. Ah. I'm guessing in the tide. I'm going to chuck them back in here. I don't believe those are ours. <laughs> <laughs> so, boys and girls, we have been talking about oysters all year. Can anyone that's watching this remind us why oysters are so good to grow? Oyster garden. Why are it so good to grow oysters? Oh my gosh, there's so many creatures. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of bugs on right now. All right, Miss Lauren, can you share with them why oysters are so good for our ecosystem? Yes, ma'am. So oysters, although they might not look like much, oftentimes people describe them as rocks of the bay. They're really important for filtering our water. So one oyster can filter up to 50 gallons of water per day. So imagine you guys growing your oyster reef, all those oysters in just one reef, being able to filter important bodies of water like our Alba's Creek that is home to many different kinds of wildlife. In fact, wetlands like our marshes serve a really important role as nurseries for young juvenile animals. So having these oysters are really important for helping to maintain the water quality and the health of the marsh itself. We are on. All right, so what has happened is we went down on our float, the SeaTac float, and we were able to get two of our nets out. The problem was we had a lot of living organisms that attached themselves, <laughs> and so we had to actually dig our way out. But let's look at the size of some of our baby oysters. Now remember the last time they were so tiny, but look how big these oysters are at the moment. I'm wondering if, when you're observing these oysters, what are some attributes that you could look at? Size, shape, Te texture. Texture, thanks Miss Lauren, and color, right? Now this one was opened, which means what? Hmm, do you remember boys and girls what that means when it's open? Mm. Ding, 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 that's right. It's dead, but that's yeah. okay because these babies found a home inside of it for protection. And these are the biggest ones we've ever seen. We only have a handful of them this big. And the other ones that are not as big, we put inside the net. So can you show them Miss Evans here? So why did you guys put them in that net? So that's a good question, Miss Lauren. The reason why we put them in the net is because the last time we were here in November, they were so small that we were afraid when we put them in that other uh, net that they would not be able to grow safely. Mm -hmm. So we took them, we sorted the bigger ones, the larger ones, and we put them in another net. So these ones are still very tiny. And we were talking about what affects the growing of the oysters and the sizes thinking about the temperature of the water and thinking about our past winter. Did and also just the type of oysters that we had. Every year the spat is different and the like from the area is different. Um, I believe these were James River mm. so they're a little bit different. Um, so sometimes they'll vary in color and in size and shape. So sometimes they're a little bit longer and other times they're a little bit rounder and see some of these almost look a little more gray where some years we've had them be like pure white. So we're gonna be collecting some data on it and, and collect. I think if we can go ahead and measure this oh. fruit that I have. Can you look, Miss Lauren? I see oh, some man. living oh, organisms lots of Lots of living creatures in here. Look at that, oh. worms. I wonder why they want to be in there so badly. Oh, look at all that. Oh yeah. See them all? Okay, do you want me to There's put these in out. here? Um, or let's keep some in the bag. Let's measure those. Okay. And then when we get ready to put them in the new net, we'll totally take them out because I just don't okay. want them to get lost. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and take my gloves off if you want, and I'll measure. Yep. So, um, boys and girls, I just want you to know that we started out with 2,000 baby oysters, which are called spat. So, yes, we understand that some of them did not make it. 
but we want to see how many are healthy. So we're going to collect uh, just to some sampling and collect some data. And then we do what, Miss Evans? And then we're going to track their growth. And so last time we had some that were only five or 10 millimeters. And now I'm guessing we have some of those bigger ones we can also track. And we're going to compare their growth. And then we'll eventually put them back into their home. And we are very muddy because yes. science is for the fearless and the brave and that's what we are and we just want you to know that it's okay to get muddy and dirty <laughs> it is. even when we're adults just wishing we didn't forget our beach towel this time that's right <laughs> so all that right first one okay do you want to go ahead and measure them miss culver and all yeah. right uh -huh. oh we got lots of little worms yep yeah, yeah. i was using the paper one but oh let's do the no let's do the paper and then here's these pile here so don't step on those fronts okay I'm going to go over here, Miss Lauren, oh, yes. so I can not get some. And then do you maybe want to get, oh, was that rain? Or was no, it was dirt. You dropped dirt on me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's raining oyster mud. <laughs> um, we also might want to grab one of the, or two of the really big guys. Yep, I'll get them in a minute. So let's see, what's this one? We're going to put it at the hinge. Yep. This is the hinge, boys it. and girls, right at the, at the, right here. Miss Clover, what do you And then we there? have two millimeters. Okay. Well, it'd be 20. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse Two me. centimeters. Two centimeters. Two centimeters. Or 20 Ooh. millimeters. These are really small. They are really tiny. Probably some tens still. 15 maybe. Okay. Bugs. I know. Lots of They're bug bites. bad today, yeah. Now these were one of our bigger ones. Look at oh, that one. Oh wow. That's that's beyond the sample. <laughs> uh huh. That's sixty. Sixty. Wow. It's beautiful. I don't think we've ever had any that big. Let's turn this around. Probably twenty. Yeah. All right. Maybe one more. Use the big one. Yeah. Sure. 50. All right. So how many did you, um, how much data did you collect? One, two, three, four, five, six. I did seven. Maybe we should do 10? Yes. All right. This guy? This one? Sure. So we're going to have some outliers there with our really big ones. <laughs> okay. 20. And where'd you put them? Right here? Right there, yep. One. Ten. Oh, sorry. Ten. Okay. And twenty. All right. So when I say outliers, that's one. Over to the beach. That's our military. Thank you. When we say outliers, I have two oysters that we measured that are really large compared to our other ones. So we have a sixty millimeter and we have a fifty millimeter. So it might skew our data a little bit, only because we have a few of those. So really, most of ours are measuring around 20 millimeters. So that's where we are at this point. Our hope would be that next time in June, when Miss Culver comes back, that there would be around 40, because that's usually where we end in our year. All right, so we're gonna put our babies back into their net, and then we're gonna put them back in their float. So here's the question. Are we gonna keep the baby oysters staying in that net, or are we gonna release them loose? We are going to release them so that they have space to grow. That's right. They are big enough now that they won't fall out of the little mesh holes mm -hmm. or that other creatures will not be able to get to them. Now this uh, net we had to destroy, sadly. Yes. We did surgery on that one. We did surgery because we had to get some of those bigger oysters were in here and that's how they had lots of space to grow because they were large the last time. All right, so let's go over here. Boys and girls, do you remember how long we are allowed to keep the oysters out of the water? If you said 24 hours or one day, is that correct? It's actually 48. Um, 48 hours. It's pushing it. It's pushing yeah, we it. usually do one day just to be safe.
which means that we can, um, that they are able to be exposed. So they can be, so there she is dumping them all in. If you can get a close up, Ms. Lauren. They can be in the high tide, which means they're covered by water. And then low tide, oftentimes they are just covered or they're exposed um, on the sand oh, or in good... the wetlands. Woo! Oh, look at that worm. That's a large one. <laughs> we don't really want him going back in there with our, our worm. So I know that a lot of you were talking about predator and preys and consumers oh, there's and producers. An open one. Oh, yeah. So that's two. We do try to keep track of how many are alive or dead. So these are very gray in color. I've never seen that. Um, are usually a little more white. But I have to say, I haven't seen many that are open. That means no, that they're dead. No, too. Now, some of them are starting to grow to this net here. So, unfortunately, they might just need to go with us. And maybe I might have to rinse them and I can get them out. All right. So, put those and in. And then we have any, and we have to put we some do. of those down here. Yep. If you want to grab those. Yep. Try to get them off of this. They start to grow together so because they live in a colony. So they do like to be stuck together. And they send one out chemicals. Look. So here's a look of how tiny they started. That's the one that's still really, really little. Wow. So they colonize together by sending out chemicals that we can't see that are invisible. And it kind of calls them to each other. And then they connect. And they usually connect to a rock or a pier or something hard. And to me, that... Fun fact that Miss Emmons just gave us to me is the coolest fact of all. I just think that is <laughs> so awesome. And that's why sometimes in reef sanctuaries or oyster reefs, you'll see what's called oyster castles. And it almost looks like sand castles, but they're made out of like concrete or a safe rock for the ocean. And they start to form a home on there. Kind of a place for them. All right, so I'm thinking if you want to just dump this through it, I'll pull this on the grass there. Mm -hmm. Or hold this if you want to dump. I'll dump. <laughs> Other ones are so big. And remember, boys and girls, we are on Ouse Creek. We are at the aquarium right next door to SeaTac, our good neighbors. Here we go. We're dumping that. Rinse our net a little too. <laughs> Beautiful water. Oh, careful. You just got your badge all coated. Where's that at? Oh. <laughs> okay, and then I'm going to dump some more oysters. Those are big guys. And most just likely, what will happen is the really little ones will start to connect to the big ones. Just because they'll start to form a colony. Over here. And this has science. probably been our messiest event ever. Yes, I definitely will go right home and get yes. cleaned up. Do you want the bigger I ones? No, we're going to have to see what the bits. Sometimes in science, you just have to do problem solving. You have to, you have to test it, see if it works, if it doesn't. And that's been our whole time today because we've never seen the oysters. And I wonder if we can make a prediction if it's going to fit or not because I'm picking not. But which is why I got the really little guys. I'm thinking you are correct. <laughs> Thankfully, it's not my first time doing this, but <laughs> we always seem to run into a little bit of a challenge, whether it's low tide, which is usually the hardest part to get them in and out, and that's why that one is coated in mud there. Well, we've also had to rearrange because every Thursday that we've come, it's been raining. Yes, but it is that time of year. Yep, April showers bring May flowers. I think Virginia Beach is March showers bring April. Flowers. I feel the same way, and it kind of just rains in April as well. Yeah. Maybe a couple. Yep. And so what we're going to do is we're going to zip tie this closed, so that way the oysters stay inside the net and they're protected as they grow, and that other creatures, besides worms, which seems to be their favorite spot, but other creatures like birds or even people mm -hmm. that want our oysters cannot get to them. A lot of people ask, especially the older children, will say. Ms. Culver and Ms. Emmons, is it okay to eat oysters? Absolutely yes. Oyster harvesting is very good. And in have, moderation. Yes, in moderation. Right. And part of the reason we do this project is a long, long time ago, like back in Jamestown time frame, which I hope you know where that is, my fourth graders, um, they over harvested and it, because it was a source of food for them, but the oysters were as big as dinner plates. So think about a plate you get, and that's how big they were compared to what we see today. So between the over-harvesting and some diseases that they brought um, when the American colonies came over here, and then also when some settlers um, and just people traveled from, actually I believe Mexico it was, they 
they brought some disease to the ocean in our area here in the Chesapeake Bay. And so our oysters did have some disease and then the water became dirty, so they couldn't thrive, plus the over-harvesting. And our supply of oysters just went way, way down, which then our water got way dirty. So we were not in a good state, but we are de slowly and And they actually do a report card now on yep. the Chesapeake Bay. And I believe the last time I looked at the report card, you know what it was, Miss Lauren? I'm sorry, I don't know. Off so my head. I believe we it can was, Google it. It was a B minus to a I C plus. I do think plus. so. Yeah, yeah okay. I think we've made some progress. We were pretty failing. bad there. Yeah, we wow. were failing, which meant the quality of our water was not safe. Can you hold that? Yep. Um, really, for our, our creatures to live, um, you know, we were not necessarily. If we did some fishing in that water, it doesn't necessarily mean the fish were safe to eat. Mm -hmm. So, the Chesapeake Bay Foundation and Lynn Haver River now started this program called the Oyster Reef Keepers to help garden them back. And at SeaTac, uh, the week of the Earth Week, Earth Day week, every day is Earth Day. We are, yep, we are going to do a party for the planet at SeaTac, and all of the clubs, which will be about 300 children, will be cleaning up the outdoor campus because you know all that trash eventually will go to our waterways, and we really want to keep our waterways clean. So it's good to do all we can to keep our environment clean and safe and happy. All right, you ready to put them back in? I am. So they stay in a float down here called a Taylor float. Um, our float is quite messy at this point, but it is a couple years old. So I think next year we'll have to get a new one. <laughs> but it's just PVC pipe and then some netting that is zip tied together. And that way the oyster float, or the nets float right in top. And as you can see, they go up and down with the tides. So they can really live that intertidal lifestyle. All right, Miss Emmons, here we go. Thank, thank you, careful. I'm careful. All right. So I'm gonna put this right in here, correct? Yep. yep, just like that, nice and flat. And we're gonna put this back in the water. Yep, and they'll be home, sweet home. Until <laughs> probably June, June when this clover comes back. <laughs> did you guys build these floats yourselves? We did, we did awesome. get the materials from Oyster Reef Keepers and their partnership with Lynn Hamer River Now and Chesapeake Bay Foundation. And then all we do is zip tie that together. Wow. And so if you want to do that, you can reach out to Oyster Reef Keepers, right? Yep. And I painted our name on there, which Aww. is slowly fading, but all we right. did have a float bandit one year where our oh, float no. disappeared. Aww. But so we thankfully, go. the oysters didn't, but the float did. Okay. Well, <laughs> so let's just hop the oysters going in. right back in yep. the water. And you can see that it's floating. It is extremely low tide right now, but it's it is still floating on top. And it's tied with that rope. Yep. And now they'll stay there and continue to grow. And that's our project. <laughs> so we hope you enjoyed spending some time on Owls Creek, our watershed, and the best place to be. Thank you to our neighbor, Virginia Aquarium, and Miss Lauren, and Miss Evans from Lynn Haven. And have a great day, everyone.